Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you? So glad you're here. Good morning, Karen. Bob Guinan, how are you? <laughs> Look like I'm up to mischief. Hmm, okay. Well, I'm not going to take that as a challenge, but uh, maybe I will. So, but, uh, morning, Robin. So glad you're here. Good morning, Sharon. Hey, Bob. Thought of you yesterday uh, at the at the museum. Uh, uh, um, boy, said they had a, uh, kind of a jeep, just like the one that you were you had in your picture there. That uh, from from all those years ago. So uh, uh, had a terrific visit there. So if you ever get a chance, please do it. Good morning, Irene. I'm glad you're here today. Good morning, John. How are you? Priscilla, good morning to you. I hope you're doing well and that uh, um, Ohio is uh, a little warmer than here. Yeah, no, not so much freezing here. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yep, there was actually snow. So a little bit spitting here and there. Good morning. Good morning, Donna. Glad you're here. Hello, Bonnie, Deb Votrin. How is everybody? It's so good to see you this morning. It is really wonderful. It's a gift that... Uh, Go Bucks. <laughs> Good morning, Sherry Lad. How are you? Glad you're here. Where? I hope everybody's well this morning and that uh, uh, you are keeping warm. If it's cool where you are, I think uh, I think it seems like it's cool all over from everybody I'm hearing from that uh, this, we're still not quite, you know, maybe... Maybe summer will get here. You know, summer might come before spring. So it's maybe one of those years, you know, where uh, where it, uh, that happens. So, good morning. Hello, friends. Hi, Deb. So glad you're here and that uh, we are gathering on this day. That. So I am glad you're all here. I see one or two more folks coming along, so... Well, we'll give them a chance to get in and and then get going. It is, uh, again, um, snow on the ground early, gone now, spitting snow this morning. I know, boy. And, it's, and, all, the, and all the things that are coming to life in the middle of it, too. You know, all of the, the, uh, the um, daffodils and the magnolias that are starting to boom, bloom, all the, all the things that are coming to life. Uh, and yet, uh, but they are born to contend with that just as we are born to contend with things. So, uh, all right. Good morning, friends. It is Thursday, the 22nd day of uh, April. Uh, we are on the last, this, the last stretch of April here. Can you believe it that, uh, uh, that we're in this place? I know every, like every day I seem to say that, don't I? Like, oh, can you believe it? It's this late, but I am continue in the 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 weirdness of our days and the the uh that we as as things continue to unfold how much we're in this place of kind of a wonky time of uh, the way time seems to go very slow and very fast all at the same time and that and that yet and so here we are you and i been journeying with that this for uh, for many months now so I want to begin us this morning with this reading from the 12th chapter of Romans. I actually think we've visited this before, but it really came to me, it really laid itself on my heart this week, and I wanted to, so I wanted to come back to it, because we've been doing some heavy stuff the past few days, and I wanted to take, I want to remind us kind of about this, this business that we're in, about being children of God. And so I wanted to come back uh, to this. So this is from Romans chapter 12. This is Paul's letter to the church in Rome. And he says, and he's, he's giving them encouragement. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. There's a lot in there. 
I, and that, I, but I didn't think about this, about, you know, what, what, it, what about God's command for us? You know, we, we've talked the past few days about, about the, uh, you know, some, some, some of the things about struggle and about pain and some of the fruit that comes out of that pain. And then about the, about even the depths of our own conflict and all of these things. But, but God gives us a way out of this. And the, and that, so that, Part of this, some of this is kind of starting to fit together, and maybe it's just a, maybe it's just a conversation that's going on inside of me. So, you get to hear the conversation that's going on inside of me. I'm sorry, but uh, but it's part of this, of of what brings us next is this. Well, what then are we to do? What then are we to do with all this warring? What then are we to do with all of this, all of the strife of the world? You know, if we look at the the headlines, you know, if you've noticed, I don't spend all that much time talking about headlines here because I. I really believe it is our our task to to that to not just wallow in the conflict of the world because we'll never solve anything that way. But it's but it's our journeying together that that we and maybe it's not even ours to solve anything. But it's it's ours to 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 bring ourselves to a higher place and to a to a place the place in which God invites us to, so that. You know, in the in the great words of Phillips Brooks, we you know we might not pray for easy times, but we may be pray to be stronger people. You know, and that 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 we might be able to draw upon the strength of the one who made us. And so all of this is fitting in. I know it's a long prologue to this, but we're getting there. Uh, that, how how is that? How rare is that? Not very. That we're in this journey of. Loving God, right? Isn't that the command? Isn't that isn't that supposedly the magic key that Jesus offers us? I mean, think about this. Isn't this the magic key Jesus offers us? What does Jesus say in terms of again and again and again? And 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 we're gonna we'll we'll hear it uh, over and over and again. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself, right? That's the that was the that's the injunction. That's that's the that's the command. But what does that look like? You know, we say that, love God, but, and and part of this comes from a, 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 a reflection that I, I heard recently by uh, by one of my more favorite YouTube folks on, on Off the Left Eye, which is a great YouTube channel if you ever want to go check it out. But they, uh, you know, but he, he talks about what does it mean to love God? Like, what does it mean? You know, what, we, 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 we are constantly, if we take our scripture seriously, constantly kind of Im, imbued with this idea of, you need to go love God, love God, love God, love God. make sure you love God. Are you loving God today? How goes your walk with God? Are you, uh, how is it with your soul? And which is another way of asking, oh, do you love God? Like that, all of these ways that we kind of come to ourselves, we're like, ah, what are we doing? What are we doing in this basic idea of God's, of Jesus' basic command before us, which is the key to the way out of all of these things in our lives? What does he say? And, and it's, it's contained in this 12th chapter of Romans of, of do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed in your renewing of your mind. So here's, the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the, one of the clues. We often want things to be better. We want new and improved. All of our products have on them new and improved. All of all of our pieces and our parts have in them new and improved. That we're we're in this in this that this way that you know our, our car will be better, faster, stronger. Uh, everything that in our lives seems to be getting better, or we or we at least are shooting for better. We at least want better. Better isn't necessarily God's promise. God's promise is transformation. That looks a whole lot different. That's a whole nother thing. It's a whole nother way of being, is to be moved into a new state of being. And it's then that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God's will for us is good, good, pleasing, and perfect. And there, friends, is our rubric. There, friends, is our little litmus test that we can kind of, you remember that? You ever do that? And just kind of like 
figure that out the pH of the thing, the little, the, you know, the, and then where we get that phrase that you can, you dunk it in the little solution and you figure out the pH of it. It's the litmus test. It's the, it's how do, what, it's how we, we discern of all of this stuff coming into us. If you paid attention to the news, and I recommend that you don't, again, said this many times, recommend that you don't, don't, very small diet of, of, of news and stuff that's going on out there. Like, you know, it's like eating lard these days. It's just not, like, probably lard is, lard is better for you. It's eating, like eating spoonfuls of sugar is probably a better analogy. That we're just, that, that it, it will bring nothing good to our spiritual bodies in the, all of the, the swirling and the churning of all that's going on in the world. And that does not mean that we need, need to be immune. It, need, it means we need to be about our Father's business. And our Father's business is loving God. Right, you got it. Hey, all right, we're, you're with me. All right, that's right. It's about loving God. And that if we're, this business of loving God is, to do, is being about God's perf good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay, let's talk about these three things, and then and then we'll uh, we'll get out of here for today. Good, pleasing, and perfect, friends. I don't know about your head, but my head is as busy as it's ever been these days. My bed is busy as it's ever is with all the little all the little distractions, all of the headlines that come in about the things I'm supposed to be horrified about, about all the things that are going on, all the things in my life, all the all of my all the hearts that are breaking in in around me, and all the and and my own heart as it breaks, like all of the different challenges and the different pieces of parts. And maybe you're maybe you're not having that experience. Maybe things are great for you. Maybe things are 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 really sweet for you. But the, it doesn't matter because the same thing, when we talk about loving God, what are we talking about? The good, pleasing, and the perfect. How, when we are sifting through the thoughts of our head, when we're sifting through the thoughts of our mind, when we're sifting through the, bit, the parts of our being, what is it that's good? You know, we say love God, and I've had some profound uh, experiences with with this, the the mystical and the deep and with God himself and with Jesus and and I I've had pro profound experiences but I have not lived in those experiences for very long and no and few other people report having done so that that we that we say we love God but but I don't but God is this really and even Jesus, in the person of Jesus, that God, that God gives us to love, that, that God is fully present and fully in, uh, embodied in, that we can, in the fullness of our being, give ourselves to this relationship with, with Jesus. And in it, we'll find our way to all those things. We'll find our way. Because that, it's that relationship that will bring us along. In all of that, and yet, you know, one of my favorite little comic strips out there, which you can go look it up, and maybe I'll post one if I can find one, is Coffee with Jesus. And it's kind of this, this little laid-back kind of idea of what, of, of maybe, uh, of, uh, you know, thinking maybe sometimes we're a little holier than thou, and, and kind of something, you know, it, it's this pithy little idea of what Jesus might say. So if you, if you, want, you, want, to, if you want to Google, there you, go, you know, I'll give you some homework today, because uh, Coffee with Jesus is hilarious stuff. But there's not a lot of us that necessarily can can willfully and honestly say we truly are in that in that level of communion. Even even in the depths of our prayer life, even when things are, are going well, even when we've got it all knocked, it feels way more amorphous, doesn't it? It feels way more squishy. Like we can have a warm, fuzzy, chocolatey feeling going on, but but it doesn't necessarily get us there. But God's love, God's love, God's will in the good and the pleasing and the perfect there's that those those things those things friends those we can pursue those things you and I know you know the good things of your life if you think just for if you take for a moment and say okay what's the one, what's what do you love doing what do you love spending your time at what like what like you know hobby what like 
things that if somebody didn't pay you to do it, you would do it anyway? What, what things that, that are a part of your day that you just resonate with? And whether maybe it's just going to have coffee with somebody and you see that person, they see you across the room like, hey, and like, and you light up and they light up. Maybe it's just a, that association. Maybe it is uh, some sort of discipline that you carry uh, that you do that, that is, maybe it's, uh, again, like, you know, building your model trains. Like, I don't, care necessarily what it is but if it's bringing goodness and but if it's bringing the good into the world and you're encountering the good there you know where that comes from god's will which is good and pleasing and perfect if we want to know the way out of our anxiety if we want to know the way out of our out of our out of the the depression of our days out of the out of the profound sadness of it when we encounter these things in our life that are that we're that that are that are our, our will light us a little bit on fire that will bring just a little bit of flame bring a little bit of spark to them move towards them move towards God's perfect will move towards the good and the perfect and move towards those things which are pleasing and not just pleasing because like, you know, uh, you know, a, you know, a, a donut is pleasing. Like it's not, I'm not just saying pleasure. I'm saying this in terms of God's will, the, the goodness of your life, you know, spending time with somebody you love, spending time with the, in the things that are good and, and entertaining those as thoughts in your mind that, that giving those attention and giving the other ones less attention. This is the, again, this is the, this is the power of the disciplines. The whole point of the disciplines, all of the disciplines, whether it's fasting, prayer, worship, almsgiving, uh, you know, all of the, all of the great disciplines, the whole point of the disciplines of the church are to give us this little bit of space, this little tiny bit of space where we get to make a decision, where we get to say somewhere in the way, I have placed before you life and death, choose life. Will uh, about our choosing and our opening ourselves to the good, the pleasing, and the perfect. Opening ourselves and moving towards it. Not just a life of like, hmm, I'll think about nice thoughts, I'll think nice thoughts, and like, oh, I'm gonna be, I'm thinking nice thoughts. Mm, yeah. Oh, I'm so thinky today. Like, it's not simply the, the ideas of, of having our thoughts and our thinkies. There'll be plenty of those. And those often take us to hard places. But it is our moving, our moving towards the good and the pleasing and the perfect. Doesn't mean we're going to get there. Like it's, it had nothing to do with arrival. And I hope part of what we've been talking about the whole this whole week is is a, you know it kind of got you that different way of talking about the, the maybe the struggle of of picking that. But the whole idea is that y that you and I have God's will on our side. God wills us to step into the good and the pleasing and the perfect. God wills us this, these things, not just in the sense of like God's, God's pushing it to us all the time, which is true. Friends, even on a cold, blustery, little bit of snow spitting, cold, damp spring morning, there are daffodils that poke through the ground. There is beauty still in it. There is wonder still at, at, at work. I remember when I was in Iraq, I had, uh, I had, I, I had uh, taken up a correspondence with um, this woman that I had, actually ended up never meeting, but she was, a, she was a public affairs officer. So we were coordinating on some stuff and all this sort of stuff. And, and she walked out one day uh, and took a picture um, it, that was of, uh, that was outside of her headquarters. Um, and, and, uh, and, um, and she took this picture and said, just sent it to me. She said, oh, you're, you know, th this really, this really moved me today, you know? And, and you know, she's, it, you know, she's at war in the midst of some real human pain and real difficulties of struggle. And, and it, the picture was a, was a spool of concertina wire. But it is a spool of concertina wire because the 
the United States Army had been there as long as it had, that it had actually been sitting next to, uh, it was kind of this this ready go kind of kind of thing that was set by the door so that in case they needed to barricade things they could grab it and go but it had, it had sat there for some time and that on the the very razor wire of concertina if you've ever seen it it's called razor wire because it it literally has razors embedded into the wire the, and it's what it's it's kind of the 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 barbed wire on steroids version and it comes in this circular kind of thing but this little tiny white flowered plant had grown itself around the circle of the concertina wire and it made this beautifully adorned circle of white flowers so delicate so precious so good and so pleasing and so perfect even though they 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 were they were using the very razor wire of concertina to support them friends in the struggles of your days in all in the in the wildness of all these days in the wildness of the headlines and the wildness of a, of the of of uh, the, our, our, the competing things that we should and supposed to be in, and are doing in all of these things. Choose for yourself the good, the pleasing, and the perfect, because that's God's will, and move towards it. Don't just think about it. Don't just, don't just oh, well, someday that'll be a very good idea. But grow yourselves. That, this, that even let the very point of the structure of your pain be the lattice work of God's love and God's glory and God's beauty in this world. All good things come from God. I know we, we say that in the church all the time, but it's probably the most simple and most powerful things that we can remember. If you want to know God, if you want to know God, if you want to love God, love the good things of your life because those are God's will poured out for you. Love the relationships, love the beauty, love the wonder even though some of it might be supported by items of pain that are just almost unspeakable. Love the goodness in the midst of them and move towards them. Be moved by life. I was just saying to somebody the other day, uh, and that that uh, and, and that we were talking about a prayer discipline, and that, that the whole thing we were talking about in the course of this prayer discipline was simply the fact that that uh, that what came out of it was that one of the things that I know I've noticed out of this year, and maybe you have too, but there's a way of there's a, and I, I've noticed it in culture, and I've noticed in all things, there's a hardness that seems to be taking over us a bit, just a tad bit of hardness. Like we're our crunchy, crusty shell is just a little bit crunchier and just a little bit crustier. I don't know if it's the inability to see faces when we're as much as when we're in public, if it's the if it's all these things. And, and I and I, and I and I live and hope and all these things that things are moving and changing. And they are. That's not my point. I, I'm just talking about where we are right now. And I'm, I'm not I don't, don't hear what I'm again, as I've said many times, don't hear what I'm not saying. When we are, we seem to be in this hardened place a little more. We're just a little creaching down a little further into our foxhole. But I would say, friends, it's time to move. It is time to move towards the good things of our lives. It is time to share in the abundance of the wonders of love and grace and peace and the good and the pleasing and the perfect. That's our hope. And it's if we want to know God, that's our relationship. That's our point of contact. That's the place that Jesus comes to us and offers us all good things in this. 
I'm not saying there aren't depressions. I'm not saying there aren't challenges. I'm not saying there isn't anxiety. I'm not saying there aren't a million things that will take us off from this. And yet the invitation is to, the invitation to the communion table. Remember. Oh, remember the good and the pleasing and the perfect. Remember it and move towards it. Move towards it in your life. Allow it to move you. Allow it to break your big crunchy shell. And that move from that feeling into your thoughts and into your action and into your world. If we want to... I can think of nothing else that takes Paul's advice better of not conforming to the ways of the world than that simple, profound, and powerful act of rebellion of letting the good and the pleasing and the perfect inform every action and every part of your day. And in that, you will find the face of Christ Jesus. Because friends, he's looking for you there too. Well, this is our, I, I'm, uh, I'm so glad you stayed with us and I hope that uh, you have a great weekend. Um, we are, we will be worshiping at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, uh, at 282 Rock Street. Please join us. If, uh, if you want to join us on Facebook live, we'll do our very best to be, be right here as well. And we'll also come and be a part. Uh, and, uh, we're also after worship, we're doing a, we, uh, we're doing a, uh, 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 a little mission project to be able to do some outreach to some folks that are shut in. So please come and be a part of that. Um, and also tomorrow at church uh, at noontime, we will have our noontime organ series. So please, if you want to be transformed, if you want to be moved by something, if you want to open yourself to the good and the, ple and the pleasing and the perfect, go be a, go go let that music work on you. You don't even have to, it's not even about enjoying it. I mean, although it will be joyful, it is about letting the, the beauty of it seep into your very being. I, I just, I, Irene asks for prayers for Jesse and Ted. To, yeah, so we'll, uh, please hold Jesse and Ted in your prayers and, uh, and the other folks that we have been on our prayer list these days. We, this, I, I'm finding more and more this is a powerful little community of prayer. And so uh, I hope you will, you will offer that in their days ahead. Uh, so have a, I, it, we will pick it up next week, friends, and, uh, and be a part of this 1111 journey. And I am so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're with us. I'm so glad you're sticking it out, whether you're with me live right now and, uh, or whether you are on the, uh, you know, you'll catch us later in the day or in the week, or maybe you just stumbled across this, uh, on, on YouTube or on our Facebook page. Um, and oh, by the way, please like our Facebook, our, our, uh, our, uh, YouTube channel, um, you can find it on the Facebook page. Please uh, give us a like there. Uh, it's a way of, of continuing to tell the story. Move towards something good and pleasing and perfect today, friends. Move towards it. Let it move you first. Let it move your heart. Let it inform your thinking and go out and wrap your arms around it. And whatever, whatever it is, whatever form it finds, whatever beauty it is, go forward and love God because God certainly loves you. All right, peace and grace, my friends. We'll pick it up next week on another 1111.